face makers welcome back well I've been posting a few things hope you've gotten something out of them but uh, had a little job coming this week I thought I would uh, touch on uh, something I had to come up with I've been using uh, these uh, items for quite a while I started using them way back on lost and um, have used them ever since uh, and somehow adapted them to my makeup usage especially uh, sometimes you have to come up with a lot of stuff at a kit um, the little item I use is called a pancake and this is uh, this is one right here this is a silicone basically it's a gigantic blender piece it starts uh, anywhere from a quarter inch to a sixteenth of an inch in the middle tapering out to nothing it's about the size of your hand nice thing about it it's a good it's a good place to uh, I mean it's a good piece to if you want to do like a, a neck slit or something and you don't have a custom made piece you know something this big you can actually wrap around a neck partially blend it off you can hide a tube underneath it you can pre-cut it you know you can do a reveal uh, you know the knife hiding the wound pulling across the neck the neck goes back blood comes out lots of really clever uh, usages of a pancake also if you have a prosthetic and you want to run a bloodline under it or somehow have access to doing a makeup effect and you need to hide a bloodline or tubing this is great because it's nice and big and flat it's thick enough that you can put something under your prosthetic put this over the tube that leads to it and make up the entire thing so it uh, just it hides the tube and, and blends in um, sometimes you'll get one that doesn't come out so well uh, like this one has an air bubble in it see that right there uh, cool thing about that is you can do what's called stacking where you can turn this seemingly useless blending piece into a really cool prosthetic by taking something uh, I'll hold this up so you can see it this is a, uh, a full sheet of separate prosthetics uh, you, you cut them out as you need them but the nice thing about them is they're a size that if you wanted to uh, stack it on top of this blender piece one of those smaller prosthetics blend it off and then now you've got a much larger base to hide something that may run up to that prosthetic and since there's a hole right here uh, if you have a bleeding arm or something you can wrap it around the arm put one of your one of your chosen wounds right in this area covering up the little air bubble there and that's a perfect spot to run a blood tube the blood tube could run up the sleeve or if you did something like say on the back of the hand and the person had short sleeves you could roll the sleeves or uh, long sleeves you could roll the sleeves up basically to height the, the blending edge your prosthetic would go on the back of the hand and then your tubing can run along underneath this blending edge leading up to your prosthetic allowing you to pump blood down the shirt under the skin and here and the cool thing about that is uh, it always looks phony to me if you have long sleeve shirt and a bleeding hand. What's nice is you got to give them a little skin. So I like to roll the sleeves up. It looks more natural. Um, when you're designing a makeup effect, think of something that makes it look natural and not in a controlled situation. If you're going to do a slit throat, don't have a guy with a button up collar and a tie to hide all your gimmicks. You know, have a loose shirt that uh, shows it or a, a loose t-shirt um, which leads me to a little job that came in last week uh, I have a friend in Hawaii who did a show who does a show and they find someone who is uh, asphyxiated they're not breathing and they have to do an emergency tracheotomy so they have to go in show the little cut and show the pretending of putting a tube into the neck I've done that several times uh, doing the old pin in the neck gag which you've all heard about uh, to save people's uh, life by allowing air to flow through the open cavity of the pen into their throat if their throat swells up from allergic reaction anaphylactic shock or something or if they get their throat you know if they're choking on something you know sometimes the extreme measure is to do a cut right in the right in the trachea here and insert a tube or something that's tube like to allow air to get through that's a real thing and a lot of times I've had to create that so what I did was I made a flat piece like a giant uh, a giant blender and here it is it's a full neck piece it's designed to fit on just about anybody male or female it's got some sculpted very subtle lines in uh, neck neck lines it basically is something that would go 
over your uh, your tubing. This could blend up along the jawline, wrap around the back of the neck, tuck down under the t-shirt, and you've got your really cool neck. You could re recut it, you know, cut it ahead of time, make a slit neck out of it. You could put a, an appliance on top of it, like a zombie bit it, and have blood come squirting out. Um, you can do a tracheotomy, like it was designed for. But uh, what I did do is I photographed the whole making and creation of this piece, and it'll be coming to a video near you. So this is the mold that I make that from. It's a pancake mold, big flat mold. What I do is I have a stock silicone mold that, that I can pour up really nice flat sculpting plates on. I put little keys on them right here. I just glue little half domes of plexiglass domes on top of it. What I did was I got a piece of plexiglass, sanded it really nice, and because a plate piece of plexiglass is about maybe a quarter of an inch thick, I just took a slab of clay and made a base to put the quarter inch thick plastic on. And the great thing about plastic is it's perfectly glass smooth. Then I just took a little clay, stuck on my little keys, put it down, cleaned up where the clay was to make it about a half inch thick, and I made a master silicone mold. Then I can pour these up as many as I want, just keep them around in case a, a job comes in. As you see, this is made perfect to fit this piece right here. So I'll show you how I did that and made the piece. Here's what the mold looks like when it's finished. And uh, here's the mold for the little pancake. Little guy right here. I made these up the same way. I made a master mold so I can knock out these little plates. And the reason I put the keys on the plate is when you have a finished piece, if you have the keys going this way, you couldn't scrape across if you wanted to do a scrape. So you could potentially use this as a scrape mold, but why? This is a hard mold. You spray it with baldies, you pour your silicone, you put it on. Boom. Done. I added uh, some bleeder holes in the back to allow air to seep out when I put it together so I wouldn't trap air bubbles like I did here. So that's kind of the ins and outs of these flat molds and making these uh, really cool pancake pieces. And. Um, I'll post a few pictures as I go along with this video to explain this, but also I'll post a new video, the whole sculpting and molding process on how to make yourself a pancake. And that's without syrup. So we'll see you next time. Hope you got all this. Watch it three or four times if you don't get it. Then you'll see the other videos and you'll be doing your pancakes all alone. No waffles, just pancakes. All right, this is Laporte signing off from the Facemaker Factory.